Super Saints. Mm. The Lord often, well, recently, I think that it's easy to build people up, you know, and think that we're, you know, I, I suppose I've been dwelling on my deficiencies, if you like, and the Lord spends quite a lot of time with me, showing me, you know, how, um, you know, in the Bible, how the disciples were, you know, and the Bible tells the truth about its principal players. There aren't any cover-ups in the Bible. What you see is what you get. People are just people, and even the best people are prone to making mistakes, failure and floundering, just like we are. You know, Moses murdered an Egyptian and, and buried the evidence. Um, Samson acted on lust for a woman, and Jonah refused to follow God. But God loved them, and he loves you too. And moreover, he understands that we're not perfect, that none of us are perfect, and that's why he's forgiven us. In Romans 4, it says, When we were baptised into his death, we were placed in the tomb with him. Sorry, it's Romans 6, verse 4. As Christ was brought back from death to life by the glorious power of the Father, so we too should live a new kind of life. In verse 5, if we become united with him in a death like this, certainly we will also be united with him when we come back to life as he did. We know that the person we used to be was crucified with him to put an end to sin in our bodies. Because of this, we're no longer slaves to sin. Read on to the end of Romans 6 because, you know, it's wonderful. But bear this in mind, death is the ultimate condemnation, isn't it? And yet because of Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross, Romans 5, through one person humanity became sinful and through one person's obedience humanity receives God's approval. We've truly been set free, not just from death, but from the power of sin over our lives. So what can we say about this? It doesn't mean that we should willfully go out and sin. But in the same way, we need to program our minds to withstand temptation and to stand on our faith. Then neither do you need to wake up in the morning feeling that you're not good enough because you haven't done what you should have done, you haven't prayed enough, you haven't, you know, whatever it is that you haven't done. And remember that God understands that we're not perfect, that we struggle, but he loves us anyway. He sent his son to the cross for each of us and he's talking to you now because you're worthy of his love. After all, 1 John 4.19, we love him because he first loved us.